Hello everyone, welcome to lecture three of algebraic topology. So last time we defined a notion homotopy between two maps whose target space and uh, input space were the same. We want to extend this notion to a notion of homotopy of spaces. And so here's a common theme in all of mathematics. If you have a notion of a map and you want to extend it to a space, you should extend that notion to the identity map. Okay, so what we're gonna do is, ex is homotope the identity map, and this will give us a notion of homotopy of spaces called homotopy equivalence. This is the most important equivalence relation in algebraic topology. And one of the central goals of algebraic topology is to classify spaces up to homotopy equivalence. So let's get to it. So uh, let's first get an example of what I mean by homotoping the identity map. So let I be the unit interval given by 0, 1. And let FT, this is going to be a homotopy of maps, uh, is between I and I be given by FT of X is equal to 1 minus t times x. Now at x is equal to 0, or sorry, at t is equal to 0, this is the identity map. And at t is equal to 1, this is the constant map. given by x is sent to 0, regardless of what x is. So you should think of this as uh, the interval morphs into a point. I have, you know, closed interval here. And everything squishes, squishes down, squishes down until it sort of gets down to a point. Uh, and so what this will let us do is take any continuous property we care about of the interval and push it over so that it gives a continuous property of the point. In other words, the interval is sort of not very interesting from a continuous standpoint. But this notion sort of isn't complete. Remember when we talked about homeomorphism, it wasn't just a bijective continuous map. It needed to have a bijective continuous inverse. So if we insist on that, we get a notion called homotopy equivalence. Let's just start with a definition. A map f from x to y is called a homotopy equivalence if there exists a map now from y to x, we'll call it g, so that if, okay, so let's just keep track of the maps up here. I have my space x, it shoots over to y with f, and y shoots back over to x via g. So if I do f first and then come back to g, this is homotopic to the identity map on x. And if I do g first and then f, this is homotopic to the identity map on y. So uh, this map I was 
writing down before between the interval and itself actually turns out to be a homotopy equivalence. So the map uh, f from a point into 0, 1 given by f of this point just goes to 0. And g from the unit interval to a point, uh, well, there's not many choices for a map here. f or g of x is simply just sent to that point. These are inverse homotopy equivalences. If I do uh, f composed with g, so I shoot over from uh, g over to a point, and then using f back to 0, 1, this is homotopic to the identity, as before, by that map that contracts the whole interval down to the point at 0. And on the other hand, if I shoot over with f to 0, 1, and then with g back to the point, this actually is just equal to the identity. Uh, so that's all there is to it. In other words, for all of the algebraic topological properties we are going to learn about, the point may as well be the interval. Here's a definition. These spaces that are homotopy equivalent to a point are sort of not interesting algebraic, algebraic topologically. So we call them contractible. A space is called contractible if it is homotopy equivalent to a point. So here's a slightly stronger notion of being homotopy equivalent. It's called a deformation retraction. So the idea is that we want to homotope a space onto a subspace and keep track of the space along the way. So the picture is, here's my big space X, I'm gonna have a subspace A, and I'm gonna push everything into A and not move A too much. So here's the formal definition. A deformation retraction of a space X onto a subspace A is a homotopy FT from x to itself, so that, first of all, f0 is the identity. So we're homotoping the identity map again. f of 1 is going to completely land inside of a. And finally, ft restricted to a is equal to the identity map for all t. 
So this F0 being the identity means I'm homotoping the identity map. F1 of X is equal to A means I end up inside A. And this third condition means A stays where it is the whole time. So I can keep track of A as I move things along. Here's an example. Let S1 cross the interval negative 1 to 1 have coordinates theta uh, and r. So, you know, theta tells you r, where you are uh, on the circle, and r tells you where you are in the, in the radius of this annulus. So here, for example, is pi over 2, 1, and here is 0, 0. The map ft of theta r being equal to theta in the first coordinate and 1 minus t times r in the second coordinate is a deformation retraction from now on I'm just gonna write d dot r for deformation retraction onto s1 times 0 so let's just check these three conditions f0 of theta r is well I need 1 minus 0 in that second coordinate, so this is just theta r. Good. Second of all, f1 of theta r, well, now 1 minus t is equal to 0, so it's always going to land in 0. And finally, ft uh, restricted to s1 times 0. So these are all the points where r is equal to 0, is theta, and now r is 0, making that second factor 0. So we've checked all the conditions, and this really is a deformation retraction. Uh, pictorially, this looks like I have my annulus, that's s1 times i. Then I have my space in here, s1 times 0. And the homotopy is going to just push everything into that circle radially, and everything out of this inside circle also radially. Until so everything just squishes right onto that red bit. So uh, here are some more pictorial. Uh, deformation retractions in the same vein. Here is a space. It's I take a disk and I cut two disks out of it. And here is a subspace. This graph here, with two vertices and three edges. And there's a deformation retraction that looks very similar. Push everything on this inside out into the red circle. Push everything on the red circle, on the outside circle, onto the red circle as well. And this defines a deformation retraction. Now deformations, deformation retractions are not unique. For example, here's another subspace of that same disk with two disks removed. And we have a very similar deformation retraction. Here is a nice little lemma, which is an exercise to prove a bit. Let A and B 
the subspaces of x, both of which are deformation of tracts of x. Then A is homotopy equivalent to B. This symbol here means homotopy equivalent. So in particular, this example up here tells me that this graph is homotopy equivalent to this graph. So here is a weaker notion of deformation or retraction, just called a retraction. A map R from X to X is called a retraction of X onto A. If R of X is equal to A and R restricted to A is the identity. So this is essentially the same thing as a deformation retraction, except that happens all at once. Deformation retractions slowly squish you onto the subspace A, or retraction just shoots you right over to A. And this is this is a weaker notion. So we'll use that in the near future. But first, let me turn our attention to one of the other central problems of algebraic topology. called the homotopy extension problem. Informally, the homotopy extension problem asks, when does a homotopy on A which is a subspace of X, extend to all of X. So the setup is uh, I have a space X and a subspace A and a map F from X to Y and I'll have some homotopy extending this map little f and I want to know when does there exist a map big F which agrees with that homotopy on the subspace here's the definition a pair is a space X and a subspace A has the homotopy extension property which I will denote HEP if given a pair of maps little f from x cross 0 into y and a map g from a cross i into y that is a homotopy of a there exists a map f from x cross i to y so that it restricts to the right things. That is, f restricted to x cross 0 is this map little f 
and uh, f restricted to a cross i is this homotopy g. So here is a lemma, which I won't prove, but I'll point you to page 14 of Hatcher if you're interested. Let's call this lemma two. Uh, it says that a pair XA has the homotopy extension property if and only if x cross zero union a cross i so that's this uh, subspace here that's written out uh, in, in full strokes not dashed is a retract of x cross i. This is a helpful criterion. Uh, instead of showing that every map extends, which seems like an impossible task, I just need to construct a retraction from this big space onto a subspace. So here is the main theorem for today's class. If X A is a CW pair, that is, remember, A is a closed sub complex of X, then X A has the homotopy extension property. So our approach to this is to sort of collapse everything cell by cell. So the first thing I'm going to do is show you how to collapse a cell. Here is my claim. DN cross I retracts onto SN minus one cross I together with sort of the bottom half here dn cross 0. So, uh, for example, here is d1 is just the interval. So this space here is d1 cross i. And I'm claiming that this deformation retracts onto this here is s0 cross i. This down here is D1 cross zero. And this seems quite believable. Um, let me just show you some sub instances of this deformation retraction. Sort of gonna collapse down like that a little bit, leaving the boundary fixed. And then I collapse down even more. And then finally, I get to this subspace I claim. So here's a subclaim. The map from uh, DN cross I to DN cross I given by, so this x here, I'm going to think of it as a vector 
in dn. So it's a vector, and the sum of the squares of each of the components is less than or equal to 1. And then this here is a point in the unit interval. And this map is going to be defined piecewise. It's 2x divided by 2 minus t, 0, if t is less than or equal to 2 times 1 minus the norm of x. And on the other hand, it is x divided by the norm of x two in the first coordinate. And in the second coordinate, it's 2 minus 2 minus t over the norm of x. And I do this if t is greater than or equal to 2 times 1 minus the norm of x. I need to make a claim here. And the claim is that this map is a retraction. So what do I need to check? First of all, that it's continuous. So here's the proof sketch. Well, there's a couple things to be worried about. One thing to be worried about is maybe this norm of x in the denominator. But if the norm of x is 0, we're always in the first case. OK, so we don't have to worry about that. Uh, and also, this map matches up on the boundaries. So that is when 2 is equal to 2 times 1 minus the norm of x. Check that these maps agree. And otherwise, it's made up of continuous functions. So we're good. Second of all, I need to check that this actually is a retraction uh, onto dn cross 0 union sn minus 1 times i. So dn cross 0 better stay fixed by this map. Uh, so check that r of x 0 is equal to x 0. You're always in the first case here. And so indeed, you end up with your second coordinate being 0. And t is equal to 0. So I get 2x divided by 2. And so this works out. And also, I need to check that it's fixed on sn minus 1 cross i. And so I need to check if the norm of x is equal to 1, then r of x t is equal to x t. Now I'm always in the second case. So for this one, you check the first case. For this one, you check the second case. And, you know, as a start, just notice that since the norm of x is equal to 1, the first coordinate is going to give you back x. And similarly, the second one, you're going to get 2 minus 2 minus t, and so you're just going to get t back. And so that works out. So that is a retraction. And so here is my second claim. The map. R, X, T, S, given by, so I'm going to interpolate between this retraction R here that I defined and the identity map. So it's S times R of X, T, plus 1 minus S times X, T. Uh, the multiplication here, I, again, I'm thinking of all of these as vectors. Uh, and this is a deformation retraction. It's quite easy to check. Uh, you just need to make sure this is continuous, which it is.
So let's sum all of that up into a lemma. Which I'll call lemma three. The space dn cross i deformation retracts onto dn cross zero union sn minus one cross i. So let's remember what we're trying to do. We're trying to show that CW pairs have the homotopy extension property. So let's prove this theorem. So the strategy is going to be to collapse each n skeleton iteratively and then when we get down to the zero skeleton it'll be clear visually what to do so x the n skeleton cross i is obtained from xn cross zero union xn minus one union a n cross i by attaching copies of d n cross i along d n cross zero union s n minus one cross i so remember though that dn cross i retracts onto this space. So, but by lemma three, dn cross i retracts, moreover, deformation retracts onto dn cross zero union sn minus one cross i. Let me draw a picture here so we're not getting lost. Uh, I want to build xn cross i. I have my subspace here that I care about, a. And what I do is I take, you know, some subspace in here x n minus one cross it with i and then I'm going to glue in d n cross i here. Remember I I, have, I get x n from x n minus one by gluing in d n. So what, I just cross everything with I. But when I do that, everything sort of retracts onto this hollow bit here. So when I do this, Xn cross I union A cross I retracts onto x n minus one cross i union a cross i. Great, so I've sort of taken this whole space and I've collapsed everything that's not an a down to one lower level of skeleta. So inductively, we may repeat this process with each cell in each skeleton to get a deformation retraction 
from xn cross i to uh, union a cross i to x0 cross i union a cross i. But what is x0 again? It's just a bunch of points. So what are we left with? So this looks like ah, uh, I forgot this x cross 0 down here. So here's x cross 0. And then I have all of this space up here, a cross i. And then I also have a bunch of these zero cells cross i. So all I have to do now is squish down the zero cells to x cross zero. to get a retraction onto x cross 0 union a cross i. So what do we do? We constructed a retraction from x cross i onto x cross 0 union a cross i. Therefore, by this previous lemma, these spaces satisfy the homotopy extension property. Okay, so that was a the tough theorem. Let's see all the cool stuff that it implies. One of the strongest things that the homotopy extension property allows us to do is to construct homotopy equivalences between spaces. So here is a proposition. If a pair XA satisfies the homotopy extension property and A is contractible, homotopy equivalent to a point, then X mod A, so this is the space I get by contracting A to a point, is homotopy equivalent to X itself. In fact, the quotient map Q is a homotopy equivalence. Let's prove this. So since A is contractible, There exists a homotopy C of T contracting A. That means that uh, C, C zero of A is the identity. And C1 of A all gets mapped to a point. Okay, so what's our assumption? Our assumption is that XA satisfies the homotopy extension property. So let's extend C of T to a map 
FT, or family of maps, FT, from X to X, restricting to A, uh, to C of T. That is, FT restricted to A is the same thing as C of T. Okay, now, since at all times t, ft of a lands inside of a, this comes from the fact that ft extends c of t, the characteristic property of quotient maps Quotient maps tells us that there exists a map FT bar from X mod A to X mod A making the following diagram commute. So X goes to X by FT, but since FT respects the quotient structure, this comes down by a map FT bar from X mod A to X mod A. Uh, so, in particular, let's look at what happens at t is equal to 1. So, from x to x, I get f1. And then down to x mod a, I get f1 bar. These maps commute with q. Now here's the important bit. Since f1 of a lands in a point, we get a map g from x mod a into x. This essentially agrees with F1 on all of the points on X and sends that point that X mod that the point that A got crushed to in X mod A to a point in X. Moreover, this commutes with everything in the diagram. So if I do uh, like Q uh, composed with G, so I do G first and I come back down with Q. This is the same thing as F1 bar. And if I go the other way, if I do Q first and then I come back up with G, I get F1. Now, F1 is homotopic to the identity map on X by FT and F1 bar is homotopic to the identity map on X mod A by FT bar. So Q and F are actually inverse homotopy equivalences. Q and G are inverse homotopy equivalences. In particular, X and X mod A are homotopy equivalent. So recall, we, uh, we showed that this double lollipop space was homotopy equivalent 
to a wedge of two circles. There, now we have a reason for this. This is a CW pair. So the double lollipop space and the line joining the two distinct vertices is a CW pair. And what do I get if I quotient out this double lollipop by the line? Well, I take that whole line and I crush it to a single point. And I get this bouquet of two circles. Moreover, The interval we have shown is contractible. So our previous proposition tells us that this double lollipop space is homotopy equivalent to the uh, wedge of two circles. Let's generalize this. Every finite graph is homotopy equivalent to what I'm going to call a wedge of n circles. So this space has a point in the middle, a loop, a loop, another loop. It's got n loops here. And the idea is if an edge ever joins two distinct vertices, then the edge is homeomorphic to the interval. And so, in particular, is contractible. Quotienting out by all of these edges leaves only edges whose start and end point is the same. And if you do this, you end up with this wedge of n circles. It's also sometimes called a bouquet of n circles. And this is going to come in handy later on when we prove that the subgroup of any free group is free. This is an essential ingredient in that proof. So the last thing I want to do is show you another way to show that two spaces are homotopy equivalent without constructing a explicit homotopy between them. Here's a theorem. Let X be a CW complex. And let DN be the end disk. Okay, so let F0 and F1 from Sn minus 1 to X be two homotopic maps. So here's two spaces I can construct. First of all, I can take X and glue DN to X along F0, or I can take X and glue 
in dn along f1 and I claim that these spaces are homotopy equivalent. So let's prove this. So I claim that these maps are homotopic. Let f from Sn minus 1 cross i to x be the homotopy between f0 and f1. Let me build a big space which is going to contain the two spaces I care about. So let B for big space be equal to X glued along this homotopy map of DN cross I. So let me draw a picture here. Here's X and Here is F0, here is uh, the image of F1, and everything in between here is big F. And this tells me how to glue on DN cross I. In particular, right down here is DN cross 0. Now, earlier on, one of our lemmas says that by a previous lemma, dn cross i deformation retracts onto dn cross 0 union sn minus 1 cross i. And so all of this, doing that deformation retraction internally, is going to retract onto this stuff here. So here is dn cross 0, and this is sn minus 1 cross i. But what have we done here? There's all that stuff that was already laying inside of x. We didn't change that, and all we did was glue in dn cross 0, along F0 here. So doing the deformation retraction internally, shows that this big space here, deformation retracts onto uh, X union F0 dn. But if you think about it, the top end of top end of dn and the bottom end of dn are completely symmetric spaces. So flipping the deformation retraction upside down, gives that the big space also deformation retracts onto x union f1 of dn. And now, these two spaces are deformation retracts of the same big space, so they're homotopy equivalent. I think this is an example of a great theorem. You have a notion homotopy of maps, and you also have a notion homotopy equivalence of spaces. And the result is, if the gluing maps are homotopic, the spaces are homotopy equivalent. So that's going to do it for today. I'll see you all next class.